Hi, this video will be an overview of Dscope's Next.js hackathon template, which showcases setting up authentication using NextAuth and Dscope, as well as integrating with Airtable to store user data. So by the end of this tutorial, we'll hopefully have something that looks a little like this, a hackathon registration page that has information on the schedule, speakers, sponsors, and then importantly, it allows potential hackers to apply. So you'll be able to hit the Supply button, go to an authentication flow that you can customize to suit your needs, and then the potential applicants will fill out their information. Hackathon organizers will be able to see the participants in Airtable and approve them as they wish. Awesome. So we'll get started here in the Dscope console. And you'll want to make sure that you have a project created and a sign up flow active in, in this flows page of your console. So we'll be using the sign up or in flow for this tutorial, but you're welcome to use whichever you'd like. And the last thing we'll want to set up before going into the code is to verify that we have the right authentication method enabled. So you'll go into Authentication Methods, SSO, Identity Provider. And here, you'll make sure that it's toggled on. The flow hosting URL is where your authentication flow is hosted at auth.dscope.io. You can even test this out yourself by copying, copying this and putting it in to your browser. It's followed by your project ID, which we'll verify later in the settings and use as an environment variable. And then the flow that we'd like to use, the ID is, is given as a query parameter. So you can change this as you wish. But we'll be using this to complete the authentication process later on. So now we're ready to set up the hackathon template locally. You can find a, a link to the repo, the GitHub repo in our description. But it's available at github.com slash dscope slash nextjs dash hackathon dash template, which is the page I'm on right now. You want to clone it, and then we'll move on to adding environment variables into the root directory. So here, once you have the repository cloned, you'll want to create a dot file, and you'll copy the dot dot example variables into that file. I've already filled out mine. So the project ID, you can go to your Dscope console project and copy it, and then paste it. You can get your access key also in the console by going to your access keys tab and, and creating a new one. For the secret and the secret token for next, you'll want to generate those using OpenSSL, which you can see I've done at the bottom here in my terminal. Make sure that you're using a different newly generated token for each one. And with that, we're ready to go. So with our environment variables configured, you can just run npm install to set up the necessary packages. The Airtable environment variables we'll deal with after we've got this running. So now we'll run npm run dev to start the server. Great, so now we see the hackathon signup page is running at localhost 3000. We can see a little bit of information about auth hacks and the schedule. Before we play around with it, let's take a look at the code. So what's happening here, if you go to app, the app folder, and then you go to the components, you can find the nav bar, which is what we have open now. So that's the nav bar at the top of the screen. The way that the sign up is being invoked is simply with this sign in call here, which is part of the next auth package imported here at the top. So just tells next auth that you should use Dscope as a provider to do the login. And then once you're done, go back to the slash dashboard page. 
But now to connect the dots between the environment variables we set up earlier and how dscope is configured as a provider for our next auth, we'll look at a couple pages. So the main one for that connection is actually the next auth options. So this is where your project ID is passed in as well as your access key. And if you look in API slash auth, next auth and your route, the auth options are passed into this file. Uh, and this configures which provider next auth should use and, and handles all, all that for you. The other two important things to know are the session provider, which you'll have to add, as well as in your layout, the next auth session provider. So if you go to our docs site, docs.dscope.com, you'll be able to find a, a quick start on essentially if, if you're adding next auth with dscope to a site without it, maybe you just ran like npx create next map, all the files and code you need to get set up properly. So you can see the, the options here that are passed in, the provider, the session provider, and the, the sign in. So those are kind of the core components of the sign-in process code-wise. But actually testing it out, we know that the main logic is triggered by the apply button, the application. So we hit apply. Luckily, it does go to the hosted flow we have. If you look at the URL, it's op.dscope.io, exactly as we had configured in the console. And then we can go ahead and, and try logging in and see what happens. So we'll quickly just log in with Google. We'll enter our password. And this should match the flow that you configured in your Dscope console. So you can customize whether you want email or pass keys, whatever you want. And there, we're logged in. But it shows that we're unauthorized. And, and this is right. But if we comment that out, you can see that our application is pending. And, and this is what you should see. So that, wrap up, that wraps up the basic running of the hackathon registration site. Now we're going to configure Airtable to serve as the back end to hold our users so we can approve applicants and fix this, this error that occurs. Great. So now we're going to go back to the GitHub repository for our Next.js hackathon template. So we'll start the process of setting up Airtable to store our users and approve them. And if you scroll to the bottom or just select it from the top, you can go to the Airtable markdown file. And this has information on setting it up. Cool. So now you'll want to remove the dummy data and then start setting these up. You can sign into Airtable. It'll create a base and then a form. So I started doing this on the side here. So I made a hackathon base. I changed the name to hackathon base and then called this table hackers. And then I went ahead, I made a new form called the auth hacks application and then added a name, input, email, university, what year are you, why auth hacks. Um, and you can see that reflected in the grid here along with a column for approving users upon sign up. So once we have that wrapped up, there are a few more instructions on getting your environment variables. So you can just go to the Airtable API reference page, get your base ID. You can create a personal access token, or you'll have to, and then get your embedded Airtable form, as well as your table name. So. I put all mine in the m file. So here, the, the other, not the m.example, but the, the m file. So now when we go over to our dashboard, you see the auth hacks application form. And then we can go ahead and fill it out. Got to make sure to use the same email that you logged in with. current year. 
settings great. We'll submit it. Now, when we go back to our hackathon base, we'll see that the user has appeared here. And the final thing we mentioned a second ago, we have to go to our API and the route and uncomment the air table configuration and make sure that we're returning real and not dummy data. So now it should fetch the base and, and get the right records. One last change we need to make is to actually, this should be accepted and not approved. And we can check the box. Great, now when we check our dashboard, our status is accepted. So we can take part in the hackathon. You see the announcements and your application below. So we're good to go. We'll call it a wrap for now. Thanks for tuning in and, and hopefully you learned a little something about setting up authentication and Next.js. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos on setting up Discord flows and Next.js. That's it for now. Stay tuned for more.